Hey, my name is Tucker. This is the first video in a series from Platform Comics. If you don't know Platform Comics, uh, we're hosting some comic book competitions. We've also got a podcast where we interview uh, professionals from the comic book industry. And we've got tutorials like this one coming out. So, um, you know, if you want to learn more about Platform Comics, what we're all about, and uh, check out any of those things I mentioned, go to platformcomics.com. So, this series is going to be about comic book production, and I wanted to do an intro video, but I didn't really know what exactly I would be showing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up an Illustrator file here, and I'm just going to type out my thoughts, maybe do a couple drawings, just to visualize uh, the basics of what I'm talking about. So I'd like to use the old phrase, who, what, where, when, why, and how. These are the questions that they teach journalists, I'm pretty sure, about you know how to get to the bottom of a story. So I'm going to use these same questions to describe comic book production. You know, who does it? What is it? Where is it done? You know, etc. So I'm going to start a little bit out of order. I'm going to start here with the what. So let's do that. What? So what is comic book pr production? So I would separate it into uh, three categories. There's pre-production, uh, production, and post-production. So these terms might be familiar to you if you know anything about like, the movie industry. Usually pre-production is before you're actually shooting the movie. Production is shooting the movie. Post-production is, you know, the editing and the color correction, sound mixing, stuff like that. But I think it, it can kind of apply to uh, comic book stuff as well. Um, production is the easiest one. That's, you know, making the comics. So writing the script, penciling, uh, inking, coloring, lettering. And, you know, it might be one person doing all of these things. It could be somebody writing it and then somebody doing all of the penciling through the lettering. Sometimes somebody's doing penciling, inking, and coloring, whatever. So most people understand uh, this concept, you know, the actual making of the comic book. But when most people, when they think about comic book production, I think what they're thinking about is the post-production. Most people know that you have to create a PDF, you know, if you're doing digital distribution or, you know, like a CBR or CBZ files. For anybody who reads your comic digitally, you also have to prepare files for the printer. You know, most people know that you have to send files to a printer and they ask for files a specific way. So, so most people think of comic book production as just kind of that. But I think there's a few other things. So one of them I would say is modifying files. Um... Hopefully you don't have to do this, but a lot of times, you know, the inker is working in a different file format from the colorist or the penciler or the letterer. So you you have to maybe resize a file or change a file from RGB to CMYK, that sort of thing. So I've had to do a good amount of this where somebody gives me a certain amount of files and I have to go in and actually edit those files. So that's a pretty normal part of comic book production. You also have to do things like creating a credits page. You know, the inside cover, somebody's got to put that together, you know, put the, the credits for the writer, artist, etc. Uh, adding the logo, you know, maybe they're not designing the logo, but you got to actually add the logo to the cover artwork. Um, reviewing uh, proofs, uh, whether it's a digital proof or uh, a physical proof that the printer is sending you, like looking over it, making sure the colors are right, making sure all the, the sizes of everything is correct. Um, I could even say scheduling. You know, like if you have a Kickstarter or something and you need everything to be on a certain deadline, uh, things need to be by a printer, the printers need, you know, X amount of weeks. So so just planning how the comic book is going to be finalized, finished, delivered, all of that stuff. Um, what's next? So, so then you have uh, pre-production. Pre-production is probably the real reason I'm making this video because I think people don't worry about all of these things I listed up here until after um, the production is done. And I think you should be preparing for this stuff uh, before you even get started. So what is pre-production? Um, first of all, it's deciding the official specs of your comic. This is, you know, the, the, the size of the files, um, the DPI, uh, the color, you know, for your CMYK or RGB, um, even, you know, where, uh, where the files are being uh, sent. Like if you're putting them all into Dropbox or if they're all just being sent through emails, all of this stuff is super important so that things get organized and so the files uh, maintain the same format throughout this entire process from writing all the way down to lettering that everybody knows what specs you should be working on, where the files should go, where they're coming from, etc. I would also I just add communicating. 
which is like, how are you going to be communicating to each other? Is it just via email? Do you have like a Slack group, um, text messages? I mean, I don't know. There's lots of different ways to do it, but having an official communication uh, mode that everybody's on board with will definitely help. And the last thing would be like references. You want to have all the references for the artists. If you're writing a comic and you're sending it to any of these people, they might be working in different styles, different tones, different, you know, goals. And so if there are comics that you want your your book to look like or feel like or even a movie you want it to feel like or a book that you've read that you want the tone to kind of stay there, having all of this stuff in order before you even start the script even, I think is super important because it could actually even affect the way you write the script. So, okay, that is the, the what. Let's cross that out. We're done. Uh, let's move over to the why. Why? Okay, so why should you care about this? Um, you're watching this video, so probably you do care about it and you have your own reasons. But one good reason is that all the big publishers think about comic book production a lot. So I'm going to write, the big boys do it. Um, and just to prove it to you, I downloaded a few comics from Image, and hopefully there's no, um, you know, copyright issues or anything. I just wanted to show you the inside cover page to show you. I just downloaded four random comics, and all four of them, this is a comic called Prodigy. You'll see here that there is a design and production credit for somebody, Melina McCulloch. This is another comic called Sonata, and you'll see here, production. There's actually two different names on here. Another comic called Unnatural, lettering and production by Fabio Amelia. So this person's doing lettering and handling the production. This is a comic I saw. It's one person who created it, wrote it, drew it, colored it, lettered it, but they still had a production design person. Production design versus production, what, is, what does the different terms mean? I don't know. I mean, sometimes the production design is more of what we talked about uh, up here, which is you know creating the credits page, the logo, the layout of the whole thing, and it's a little more of a visual thing. But uh, I think usually there's somebody who's kind of making sure all of this stuff is in order. So yes, the, the big boys do it. Obviously, you shouldn't do something only because publishers do it. And you can check a DC Comics or Marvel Comics or any other publisher. I just chose a few from Image. They all have people who are doing production. Um, and you can assume if they're doing it, they're paying these people. They're doing it for a reason. So what is that? Um, the main one is to avoid problems. What kind of problems? It could just be like, you know, the letterer is getting ready to letter. And they say, hey, uh, you know, these files are not the right size for what most printers want. And then you look back and you see that, uh, you know, the, the inker, for some reason, changed the sizes. And then they handed off the files to the colorist who, who didn't change it. And so now it's been in the wrong size ever since the inker got their hand on, hands on it. So now you're trying to go back to the inker and say, hey, uh, can you, you know, reformat these files? And then maybe they're not responding to emails and you have some problems. Uh, so it could just be something like that, which is annoying, you know. Um, but it could actually be worse. It could be like that person is out of reach or they would have to completely redraw the pages or something like that. And then you have a Kickstarter with a deadline and now you don't know what the heck to do. And so maybe, uh, you know, the colorist, for some reason, everybody was working in TIFF files, which are really high resolution files. And we'll talk about that. And for some reason, they started exporting JPEGs. And so the letter is like, hey, there's a random few pages here that are JPEGs. You know, maybe the colorist is missing in action. And now you just have to use these JPEGs. And now so like a couple of your pages are just lower quality, maybe a little pixelated. I've actually seen this. I've actually seen a comic that looked pixelated. And the the person explained to me, yeah, like they couldn't uh, get the uncompressed files from the artists and so they just have to use those and I'm like that's insane that you actually went and printed that that's actually another thing that um, I would add to the official specs here is the file types like what kind of files are you working in JPEGs or TIFFs or whatever you're probably gonna be working in TIFF files so you know making that clear to everybody from the get-go so that's the why you should do it is um, you know like you don't need to do it but if you don't do it you're gonna have problems you're gonna encounter all kinds of issues I've done comic book production for a bunch of comics and whenever there's problems, it's always because these people didn't plan ahead, you know, and they got to the end of the process and they're saying, oh, crap, uh, we have the wrong file types. What do I do? And then I have to kind of do a bunch of file converting and resizing things and reaching out to, you know, somebody else in the process and getting the original files from them. And, you know, it's a whole mess. And so the reason to do it is that it doesn't, you know, seem like a lot of fun. It's not very sexy. It's not very creative, but it will totally save you headaches down the line. So that is the why. Let's cross that out. Uh, and now let's move over to the who. The who. 
So who is in charge of the comic book production? Uh, if you're at a big publisher, um, they probably have people on staff, you know, who just handle these sort of, sorts of things. A lot of comics, like, you know, the writer isn't necessarily the owner of the comic. Um, the publisher is. So the writer is just a hired gun. They're not expected to do all, all of this sort of stuff. And I say that because with indie comics, uh, it's almost always the writer. Most of the times with indie comics, what I see is that there's a writer or writers who create the, the story, and then they hire, you know, all of these people. Um, the penciler, inker, colorist, artist, that sort of thing. And so it's like a work-for-hire thing. So at the end of the day, the writer is kind of the person in charge. All the decisions revolve around them. So it's like you have the writer, and they're hiring an artist, colorist, letter, and those people all sort of report to the writer, right? For a publisher, it's probably more like the writer's down here as well, well I guess here on the left, and then the publisher is here, right? They're all reporting to the publisher, or maybe whoever's uh, in charge of the production at the publisher, they're all kind of reporting to them. But with most indie comics, what I see is this structure, even if you're not going to actually do this technical stuff, you know, deciding the specs and creating the PDFs, etc., you're still kind of the one in charge, so you are responsible for it getting done. So I think there's actually two reasons why a writer might actually do this stuff themselves. I think there is the bad reason, which is they got to the end of the process, the letter handed them the files, and they're like, okay, now what? And then they realize, crap, I got to do all this stuff. And then they kind of have to learn to do it and so they force themselves to do it and maybe that's why you're watching this video you got to the end of your production and you don't know what to do next the printer's asking you for file types and different color profiles and you don't know what any of that stuff is so you're trying to learn um, that would be the bad way to do it because that means you're unprepared and maybe it's it's a good way to learn you know it forces you to learn but at the end of the day it's better to be prepared and know what you're doing which is maybe why you're watching this video as well uh, and then there's the good way which is if you know, if you know the softwares, you're good with um, the technical stuff, then you can totally handle the comic book production. It's not that complicated if you have a basic grasp of like Photoshop and InDesign, or even if you don't know InDesign, a lot of the skills go from one to the other. So there are certainly some occasions where it's good for the writer to be doing it. You wouldn't think a writer should have that kind of responsibility, but it can totally be done. More often than not, what I see is the letterer doing the production. And when I said that I've done comic book production, it's because I've done comic book lettering and it sort of falls on me by default. Um, I actually think there's a few good reasons why the letterer seems to do it. I know even big publishers do it. That image comic, Unnatural, yeah, it was lettering and production by Fabio Melia. Uh, I've seen some other comics from Image and other publishers where the letterer is also doing production. Um, I think there's a few reasons why. One is that the letterer kind of works more in the graphic design field than the artists and the colorists who work more in like an illustration field. Now that's not to say that artists can't do graphic design and letters can't do illustration. It's just, um, you know, in basic terms, the colorists and artists work in like Photoshop, which are pixel based softwares, letters working more in illustrator, which is more vector based. There's just a slightly more graphic design element to being a letterer. And a lot of this stuff is more graphic design related. Um, another reason is that letters are often coming up with logos as well which goes back to the graphic design element. Um, and so logos is part of the post-production, you know, making the logos and placing them on the, on the cover. Another reason is that they are at the end of the process. So because the letter is the last person in line, they can go from lettering to doing all the post-production immediately. And let's say you hired, you know, a penciler who says, yeah, I can do the production for you as well. Um, and then the files go from the penciler to the inker to the colorist to the letter. And then they're ready to, once everything's finished, they're ready to be, you know, put together in the post-production, you know, it's in that time since it's gone from the pencil or all the way to the letter, maybe they took on another job, they're busy with something else, and now they have to take time out of that job to come and work on your thing, and maybe they're busy, and, and you can't wait around. So, like, if the letter is doing it, it's like they're already working on your comic. They could just continue to work on your comic. So that's why I think letters end up doing it. I mean, I would say, like, 75% of the comics that I lettered, I ended up doing uh, the production as well. Zero percent of the time has somebody who hired me to do lettering work 
reached out to me during the pre-production phase, like during the writing phase, and said, hey, since you're going to be doing the, the post-production, why don't you get on board now and kind of help us determine all of these, uh, these specs and, and how we should put everything together. So um, that kind of leads me to the next section here. Let's cross out this who. Uh, we're going to jump to when. I think it's actually maybe the most important part of this video. So like we said before, there's pre, there's, you know, during and post. Before you're making the comic, while you're making the comic, and after you're making the comic. It's important to remember that production is happening during all three of these phases. So even like during the making of the comic, there are all these people involved, right? Maybe you have a penciler, uh, there are inks, colors, and letters, you know? And you're the writer and you made the comic and you're sending uh, the files to all these people. Well, when the penciler is done, they're going to be sending the file to the inker. And when the inker is done, they're going to be sending the file to the colorist. And when the colorist is done, is they're going to be sending the file to the letter, and then the letter is going to be sending the file back to you. So all of these instances here are moments where things can go wrong. The inker might be using the wrong color space, the colorist might be using JPEGs instead of TIFFs, the letter might be resizing things or, you know, going outside of the bleed area. And we'll talk about all these concepts, but these are all moments when things can go wrong. So you, as the person producing the whole thing, has to check in during each of these steps and make sure that the files, before the inker starts, make sure that the files from the penciler are the way they need to be, so that the inker is less likely to mess it up. And then same when it goes from the inker to the colorist, the colorist to the letter, etc. So while the comic book is happening, you have to always be managing these things as well. Obviously, at some point, if everything looks like it's going okay, like you don't have to check every single little file, but at least being cognizant that things can and do go wrong. Um, I had a project that I worked on where I did like multiple issues of a comic and I told them, hey, just so you know, all the pages are a different size than they've been in previous issues. And they had no idea. And they went back and they realized that the problem had actually started all the way back here at the penciler. So they had hired a, a new penciler, pencilist, penciler, and I guess the penciler did not use the same uh, page size as the other penciler. And so they used the wrong size and the size got sent to the inker and the inker, I guess, didn't notice that it was a different size and neither did the colors and it got to me. You know, and I was able to fix the problem fairly easily. Um, and we'll get into that in another video of how to modify these files. But the point is it made it from, you know, all the way up here, all the way down there without anybody noticing. So post-production, most people already know that stuff has to get done after the comic book is done. All that stuff we mentioned uh, up here, you know, making the PDFs, preparing everything for the printer, etc. And the pre-production is the real reason why this video exists, you really have to be aware of what's happening before you even start. If you're not planning all this stuff ahead of time, you don't even know that you're supposed to be looking for problems because you don't even know what the problems could even be. You know, if you don't set up the rules before all of this stuff, then you don't even know if these people are breaking the rules because what are the rules? If you're not aware of what's happening at the end, like what the end product needs to look like, what color space it needs to be in, etc. So you have to know what's happening at the end of the process so you can plan ahead for it at the beginning of the process. The vast, vast majority of people are not worried about this uh, from the beginning. And I think you cannot rely on your artists either. You know, the inker is just, they're being paid to ink. Maybe they got other things they're worried about. You know, they're not responsible for making sure that your files are the right format. That's your job. You know, you're paying them. It's up to you to make sure that they are delivering the, the files in the way that you need them. So moving on, cross off when. Let's now go to where. Where is comic book publishing happening? So if you're doing a, a comic book with a publisher, it's probably happening at the publisher's, you know, office. Like, they usually have people there who are handling all this stuff. If you're doing it yourself, it's probably happening on your computer. There was a time when this sort of production happened uh, without computers. I mean, like, you would have a, a device. Let me see if I can draw this. It was essentially like a camera, like that. You would put the page on this base, and it would take a photo of your of your comic page, and then that would get sent to a printer, and then the printer would put it together. So, yeah, nobody's doing that anymore. It's happening all digitally. Um, so it's happening, you know, in these softwares, almost always Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. So another aspect of the where is if you're having your comic uh, printed, I can't spell, printed, um, that means it has to be physically printed somewhere, right? So uh, a company like Print Ninja, which I'm pretty sure they're based out of Chicago, 
but they do their printing in China. So why does that matter? Well, if you're doing printing in in another country, you know, maybe they're using, you know, centimeters instead of inches, or maybe they're using millimeters or, you know, how they're handling pixels, that sort of thing. Um, But aside from like international uh, differences, knowing where you're going to have it printed, like if you're going to print Ninja, the size that they use for a finished comic is 6.625 inches by 10.25 inches. I'm pretty sure that's after it's cut, so the file's actually a little bit bigger than that. But if you look at like the Kablam template, this is from the Kablam website, um, the area that's actually being trimmed, like so the final size of your comic book is 6.75 by 10.25. So it's the same height, but it's 6.75. So yeah, it's only a tenth of an inch, but so knowing where you're going to print the comic is going to change what size uh, your files are going to be. So even in your pre-production, you should know where it's going to be printed so that you can determine the size, the DPI, what color space do they like to work in. Uh, I think Kablam is like fine with RGB files, whereas Print Ninja requires CMYK files. So like, you know, knowing where it's going to be done will determine how you make your decisions during the pre-production. And of course, most people uh, do not think about this sort of thing before. And so they're converting files, they're trimming files. I have to do that a lot. I have to resize things and crop things for a specific printer because the creator didn't know where they were going to be doing it, so they didn't determine ahead of time what the sizes should be. So that's the where. Cross that out. And finally, we're into the how. How... So how is uh, comic book production done? So most of the time, this is done in uh, Adobe software. This is uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. Um, Let me put those here. Photoshop and InDesign especially. Illustrator, you don't need that much for for, uh, comic book production, but it gets used for lettering and a few other things. So these are kind of the industry standards. If you don't believe me, here I brought up the Print Ninja website. They have templates for InDesign, Photoshop, and Illustrator. They don't have any other templates for different software. This is the Kablam template page again. And you can see it says, open the template in your image editing software, Photoshop, Illustrator, or InDesign. You know, they say etc., so they leave it open to use it with other softwares, but um, they're assuming you're using one of the big three. Most other design softwares will uh, allow you to open up Adobe files, so like you can open these templates in other software probably. Uh, but it's just to say that Adobe is like the industry standard. So what's the problem with that? Well, first of all, these softwares cost money. Let's make that green and big. And a lot of people don't want to spend money. You know, the comic book production could be something that could take you, you know, an afternoon to do, and you don't want to buy a bunch of software for something that takes you an afternoon. So I'm going to do a series of videos about how to do all of this production stuff on software that is free, free and open source. Um, there's a lot of great software out there. It might not be as powerful as these, and it might be a little more annoying and complicated to, to do all this stuff, but it is completely doable. So you don't need to invest in, uh, you know, expensive software to do good comic book production. Um, so that said, we ended up actually exactly as big as I had predicted this whole lesson plan would be. Uh, this is how you make comics. So let's, let's, uh, cross that out. The other videos will be going into the actual details, you know, how to determine the size of your comic, the DPI, the color, the file types, etc., and how to produce your export files for digital distribution and for your printers as well. So hopefully this is a good introduction into why you should be doing it, and uh, especially why you should be doing it from before you even start making the comic. If that isn't clear to you by now, then, you know, Godspeed. Good luck to you. Really quick, one thing I forgot to add to the pre-production to, like, your official specifications is, like your bleeds and live area. Um, What that means is, like if you look at this Kablam template, this red area here is what's going to get cut out um, and your artwork needs to extend past into that area. And then they have this margin area, which everything inside of that, they call it the live area. They say you shouldn't put anything important, you know, this close to the edge. Uh, Now, most artists and people working in comic books understand this and they will instinctually uh, not put anything important near the very edges. Uh, But sometimes people doing lettering will get a little too close. So you can send them like this actual template and then they can lay this on top of their art and make sure that they're in the areas. There's a lot of templates like this you can find all over the internet. But you probably can just tell them like, this is going to be the size of our files and uh, this is going to be the size of our live area. So just keep everything within, you know, that area. But again, most artists instinctually know not to uh, put anything important too close to the edges. So, all right, thanks for watching. This has been a Platform Comics tutorial. My name is Tucker and I will see you at the next video.